The Barquista crown is a curve that makes an accelerate from point A to point B in the least time. In order for this to happen, there must be a constant force applied to the object and there must not be external variables like friction or wind. This curve was discovered by Johann Bernoulli back in the 17th century. He saw how the direction of the light changed when it passed through a glass. With the help of the Snell's law, he figured out that if he placed enough pieces of glass, the light will refract and show the path it follows in order to go from point A to point B in the least time. The path shown by the light was in fact the Barquista crown. Bernoulli also found out that this curve is also a cyclone, which is a point on the rim of a circle of radius are rolling along a straight line. In this experiment, we're going to build a small model with a Barquista crown, a lineal and a parabolic ramp. We will put them to the test with the objective to prove that the brachistochrome ramp is the optimal line for accelerating an object with the use of gravity. Also, we are going to prove that in the brachistochrome, no matter at which point you leave the object fall, it always arrives to the end at the same time. Functioning First we align the three curves that are different, the brachistochrome, the parabolic and the linear. Then we put a piece of cardboard at the end of the three curves to see with a chronometer which marble will arrive first. Then a person leaves the three marbles at the beginning of the ramps and the other person starts to record and the other starts the chronometer. We let the marbles fail and we register the order in which the marbles arrive. Then we put the three Barkistone ramps and we do the same process, but this time the marbles are in different positions not all in the top. In order to make the brachistochrome graph, we had to trace a cycloid with the help of a 30 cm circle. For us to make the lineal ramp, we use the equation y equals minus 31x divided by 45. For the parabolic graph, we use the equation y equals x minus 31 squared divided by 21.35. Finally, for us to compare the different velocities among the different graphs, we use the formula distance over time equals velocity. Thanks to this, we found out that the velocity of the brachistochrome was the biggest with 481 centimeters per second. Also, when we compared the three brachistochrome graphs, even though there was the same time the distances were different, so we had different velocities. By the time when we started modeling the ramps, we realized that it wasn't easy to cut the cardboard and paste it. The process of making the six ramps took two hours more than we expected and much more hand skills than we thought. Still, we succeeded. As we previously researched, the marble that rolled in the brachistochrome took the least amount of time and when letting the marbles roll in different starting points inside the brachistochrome, they all finished at the same time. With the help of slow motion camera, we were able to get more precise results. Still, we had a lot of machine errors, first of all because of the quality of the materials. For example, the cardboard cannot be cut that precisely by hand, the chronometer of the iPhone did not project every centesimal of second, and the paths were not exactly proportional to the ideal routes because of human eye errors. Also, we had a lot of factors we could not control, like friction and not coordinating the launch of the marbles. Still, we got all the results we expected. This was a really entertaining and challenging project. We learned a lot about the history of the Barkistochrome and we enjoyed the process. Our love for physics grew and we hope that everyone learns a little bit about this phenomenon. Thank you for your attention.